Hello, I am Lalit Yadav and the subject name is Engineering Material and today's topic is Heat Treatment. So actually what is the heat treatment? The heat treatment is nothing but it is the operational and the combination of the operation involving heating at the specific rate. Uh, soaking at the temperature for a period of the time and cooling at the some specific rate. The aim is to be obtain a desired microstructure to achieve the certain predetermined properties like physical, mechanical, magnetic or the electrical types of properties. Uh, and heat treating uh, Heat treating is defined as the controlling the heating and the cooling of the metals for the primary purpose of the alternating of their properties uh, such as the uh, strength, ductility, hardness, toughness, machinability and so on. Uh, the, by the heat treatment we can achieve the uh, strengthening uh, we can done for this for the strengthening purpose and for the softening and the conditioning purpose like annealing, tampering etc. Uh, the heat treatment is divided into the three basic classifications. The, uh, the heat treatment of the steel first is hardening, second is softening and third is conditioning and the hardening is further uh, two types we can done uh, the first is direct hardening and the second is diffuse treatment the uh, direct hardening can be done by the uh, austenized and the quenching process and the selecting and the uh, austenitize and quench by the flame induction uh, laser electron beams etc and the diffusion treatment is by the uh, diffusing the diffusion of the carbon nitride nit diffusion of the nitrogen bronize diffusion of the bronze and the special specifics like the vanadium silicon etc the carbo carbonitrating diffusion uh, is uh, the carbon plus nitrogen the ferritity uh, ferrite micro nitro carbonizing uh, that is the uh, carbon and the nitrogen and the softening process uh, there is a recrystallization process actually it is recrystallization process and it is done by the annealing process annealing process is further by the four processes that is the process annealing full annealing uh, spiralizing annealing and normalizing and uh, it can be done by the uh, tampering the os tamper or the mar, uh, mar tampers and the heating for the hot working process so this is the recrystallization process and the conditioning uh, for the stress relieving uh, spring aging steam treating and the cyanogenic uh, treatment Now the heat treatment of the steel for the strength of the steel actually and it steel uh, is strengthening by the carbon composition that is the 0.06 to 1 percent of the carbon composition and must the we contain at least the 0.6 percent of the carbon composition that is the ideal uh, ideal conditions of the missing the uh, carbon composition uh, with the iron and um, make the uh, steel is strength and uh, must heat it to the austenite temper temperature range and must rapid quench to prevent formation of the equilibrium product basically crystal structure change from BCC to the FCC at the high temperature and the BCC can hold more carbon in the solution 
and the rapid cooling the crystal structure wants to uh, return to its bcc structure it cannot cannot due to the trapped carbon atom the net result is the destroyed crystal structure the body centered tetra tetragonal is called the metal sides almost al always um, followed by the cantering process Uh, now we take the first the direct hardening process uh, austenitizing and the quench process by uh, direct hardening can be done by these two process the austenitizing uh, again taking as a steel with the 0.6 percentage of the carbon and the greater and the heating to the austenite reason that is in the 912 to the 727 degree centigrade uh, rapid quench to the trap the carbon in the crystal structure is called the metal side which, which is the bcd structure the quench requirement uh, determined for the isothermal diagram as we see in the uh, ttt diagram also Uh, this is the curve where the austenite region is shown here. Uh, this is the austenite region uh, in this curve. The curve is between the temperature in terms of the uh, degree centigrade and the carbon percentage carbon composition. So this is the 0.76 carbon composition and this point is the eutectoid point at the temperature of 727 degree centigrade. So this is the austenite. Uh, this is the eutectoid uh, temperature line and this is the eutectoid reactions line and here the austenite is the cool this is the austenite region so here it is the cool down up to the temperature 912 degree centigrade and up to the uh, eutectoid temperature so here it is the austenite plus cementite composition and here it is the hardening temperature zone so these are the hardening temperature zone the uh, heat to the austenite range wants to be close the transformation of the temperature to get the fine crystal structure or grain structure now come to the quenching process uh, depends on the how fast steel must be quenched uh, as we see in the TTD diagram and the heat treater with the determine the types of quenching required the, these are the uh, by which the quenching process in the suppose water, oil, water, soil, salt, gas or air uh, the many phases between for example add the water uh, polymers to the water reduce the quench time uh, more quench time uh, and adding the 10% sodium hydroxide or the salt with uh, will have to twice the cooling rate which means the cooling rate will be increased now the second is the selective hardening in the direct hardening process the selective hardening is the same required as the austenitizing uh, must have the sufficient carbon level that is the greater than the 0.4 percentage of the carbon the heat to the austenite region and the quench why do it why do it uh, when only the desire to select the region to the harden for the supposed for example knives gears etc the object to be the big to heat in the furnace large casting wear surface the ties the ties of selecting hardening is the flame hardening induction hardening laser beam hardening and etc so here we take the first the flame hardening this is the example of the flame hardening here it is the uh, harden zone by this is the plate uh, by which we can uh, harden this uh, surface of this plate with the help of the um, uh, fuel uh, with the help of the flue gases and here it is the supply of the fuel gases and this by this pipe and this is the second pipe 
is by the point water is supplied and here it is the direction of the flow of the uh, uh, quenching process and here it is the uh, hardened zone and the flame hardening for the flat surface by this process here it is the, in second diagram this is the circular disc type of uh, object and the hardened zone is that is the hardened zone and again here it is the flame is supplied from this pipe and the, the water is supplied quench water is supplied from this pipe to cool down the uh, at the from the quenching uh, temperature and here it is the, some examples for the flame hardening profiles uh, which is these are the flame hardening profile which is in white color these are the, the this is the gear and this is the wheel and this is sheave and this is the bush so here it is the white color this is the uh, hardening profile uh, for the typical mechanical component so this is the flame hardening process now the softening and the conditioning the re, in, in which the recrystallization and the annealing process uh, is comes the first in annealing process the process annealing the stress relief annealing normalizing and the uh, tampering so here we take the first crystallization in the softening and the conditioning process uh, the recrystallization done often with the cool working process uh, limit to how much steel can be cooled work before it become to uh, brittle it process heat still up to the grain return to their or original size prior to the uh, subconscious uh, cool working process uh, also done to refine the coarse grain So here it is the recrystallization process in this diagram. So here it is. Uh, these are the suppose this is the plate and both side the uh, the hot finishing. This is the hot finishing process and this is the heating to the blue blend. And here it is the roller. These are the two rollers in which the blend is move in the forward direction. So here it is the crystal size. You see the crystal size is bigger after the rolling process. The recrystallization of the grains and uh, here it is the in second process. We here it is the grain size is reduced and the finished shape of this spiral type. So these are the object. So these are the section, I section, L section, channel section or the circular disc. So by this process we can do done the recrystallization process uh, this is the again the phase diagram of the iron iron carbon because here it is the uh, heat treatment process in this uh, phase diagram the phase diagram is again on the y axis we take the uh, temperature in degree centigrade and the uh, carbon percentage up to the 1.6 percentage of the carbon uh, here it is again this is the eutectoid reaction and sorry this is the eutectic reactions this is the eutectic point and this is eutectoid reaction and uh, here it is these are the uh, this is austenite region so this is the process of the normalizing the, the, the normalizing process is start from the 900 12 degree centigrade and this is the up to the full annealing up to the eutectoid temperature uh, this is the full annealing process and the hardening uh, in this feature and below the eutectoid temperature the spiralizing annealing is occurred and the process annealing which is very low temperature after the 700 degree centigrade so this is the process annealing in which the material is more ductile here the in process annealing uh, firstly the, the annealing the annealing primary purpose is to the soften the steel and prepare the adding the processing such as the cooled for
form, forming or the machining and i if the already the cold work allow recrystallization the what is the full annealing the full annealing is the process to snowing raising the temperature is about the 50 degree centigrade uh, uh, or uh, 122 uh, degree fahrenheit above the austenitic temperature line as we see in the phase diagram that is the uh, denoted by the a3 and as again you see so this is the uh, austenitic line this is the uh, a3 austenitic temperature line Uh, uh, steel and this is the uh, rise up to the 50 degree centigrade into the austenite to the cementite region and in this time the steel will be the 0.77 percentage of the carbon composition uh, in this diagram uh, here this is the phase diagram again for the uh, iron carbon and the annealing process here we explain the annealing make as uh, making a metal as a soft as possible and the hypo eutectoid this is the hypo eutectoid steel which is the low uh, 0.83 percentage of the carbon here it is the 0.83 percentage of the carbon and here it is the above the 0.83 percentage of the carbon and this is the eutectoid point at, at which the 0.83 percentage of the carbon is shown here and this is the lower critical temperature below the eutectoid temperature and this is the uh, above critical temperature so here it is again this is the hypo eutectoid annealing and the normalizing band and this is the normalizing hyper eutectoid steel this is the normal hypo eutectoid steel annealing annealing hyper eutectoid steel is this reason the here it is the hypo eutectoid which is below the 0.83 percentage of carbon and hyper eutectoid above the 0.83 percentage of the carbon which is soft the alloy to the cool slowly at this temperature now the process annealing the process annealing low carbon steel may be hardened through the cold working uh, they can be heated to around 100 degree below the uh, lower critical temperature and soak and allow to cool the air the spheroidizing the high carbon steel may be annealed just below the lower critical temperature to improve the machinability so here it is so these are the process annealing of the steel uh, with up to the 0.2 percentage of the carbon here it is the 0.2 percentage of the carbon so this is the reason of the process annealing and here it is the re reason of this is the reason the process annealing of the steel is range is called the spheroidizing so this is the spheroidizing reason and the spheroidizing is gather the high hard cementite into the spheres uh, this make the steel is easy to uh, uh, machine and this is again the eutectoid point <coughs> sorry Uh, this is the eutectoid point 0.83 percentage of the carbon. So here it is mainly the this is the spheroidizing reason and this is the process annealing reason. Now the normalizing. What is the normalizing? Normalizing is generally occur in the uh, open air. The cooling in the open air. The internal stresses caused by the rolling. and the rolling or the uh, forging are the removed the steel are the heated above the upper critical temperature so and cooled in the air the cooling rate is the uh, faster than the annealing giving the smaller grain structure the what is this now the stress relieving the component is heated and held to the temperature for the period of time and cooled slowly to relieve the stresses 
Now again the hard thing, the medium and the high carbon steel that is the 0.4 to the 1.2 percentage of the carbon and can be heated until the red hot and then quench in the water producing and the very hard and the brittle metal at the 723 degree centigrade the BCC ferrite structure uh, um, structure change into the austenite with the FCC structure as we see in the phase uh, diagram. The matter is heated to over the 780 degree centigrade with allow to carbon to dissolve into the FCC uh, austenite. The quenching the matter uh, quickly in the water prevent the structure from changing back to the BCC. The different structure body centered tetra -conal, uh, which is called the BTC formation and is called the multi-site and the extremely hard and brittle with the needle like microstructure as we see in the previous classes. Here it is the hardening carbon steel fast pulling process is here for the fully austenite. Here it is the again, the, this is the phase diagram and between the uh, temperature and the carbon composition. And here it is the carbon, uh, iron is the 100% and at this point the carbon percentage is the 1% and the iron is 99%. So here it is, this is again, the, this is eutectoid point and this is, at this time, this is the fully austenite, which is structure is the FCC and this is the lower critical temperature line and here it is the structure of the multi-site when it is cooled from the austenite to the uh, uh, up to the temperature of uh, 400 degree centigrade so this is what the multi-site is look like the hypo steel not the needle-like structure here it is the needle-like structure when the steel is cooled rapidly a structure is known as the multi-site and to form in the steel metal side is very hard the FCC austenite it try to change the BCC but and up to the new structure is called the body centered tetra -gonal, that is called BTC now the tampering process tampering is nothing but to remove some of the bitterness from the hardness steel Tempering is used, the metal is heated to the range of 220 to 300 degree centigrade and cooled. The tempering colors are in the indicated of the temperature on the polished metals. The color range is from the yellow to brown and the violet to blue color. So by this color coding, we can uh, judge the this is a complete tempering or not. Here it is the summary of the heat treatment. Here it is again, so this is the normalizing reason which is denoted by the A and B annealing uh, or the hardening. So this is the annealing and the hardening zone and the C1 is the spiralizing or the process annealing. So this is spiralizing and process annealing reason and this is the tampering reason. So here it is the temperature is up to the 200 degree centigrade. So this is cool up to the 200 degree centigrade in the tampering process. Now the quenching media is like the brine which is the solution of the water and the salt solution and the second is the pure water and the oil and air and turn of the furnace. Diffusion hardening. The diffusion hardening are the required the high temperature that is the greater than the 900 degree Fahrenheit and the host metal uh, must have to low concentration of the diffusing species and must be atomic uh, suitability between the diffusion spe spacing and the host metal. The most common type of the are the carbonizing, nitriding, carbonitriding and the cyaniding. The, these are the process by which we can done the uh, diffusion.
diffusion hardening process the first we take the cast case hardening the low carbon steel cannot be hardened by the heating due to the small amount of carbon present the case hardening seek to the give a hard outer the steel over the uh, softer uh, core of the metal the addition of the carbon to the outer steel is known as the carbonizing uh, this is the pack carbonizing the example here we take the component is packed surrounded by the carbon rich so this is the iron atoms these white color these are the iron atoms and this is the rich material of the carbon and the movement of the carbon is in the downward direction so here it is the space between the iron atom and the carbon atoms are the uh, interstitial uh, between the uh, uh, solid solution of the iron so here it is the component is packed surrounded by the carbon rich component placed in the furnace at the 900 degree centigrade uh, over a period of the time carbon will diffuse into the surface of the metal the longer level of the furnace is greater and depth of the hard carbon steel the grain refine is the necessary in order to prevent the cracking so this process is uh, called the pack the carburizing here this is the um, um, systematic diagram of the pack carburizing so here it is the uh, gadget with uh, this is the abstrol uh, gasket with the control the uh, um, venting and here it is the sealed steel container and this is the active charcoal so here it is the heated from both the side the heat to the carburizing temperature above the transformation temperature and here it is again the temperature so this is here it is the carburizing process is uh, conducted in this chamber so here it is in the empty space of the iron or the vacant space of the iron so these are the uh, uh, interstitial in the space of these uh, in the curve diagram the carburizing in the time uh it takes the time on x axis and the depth of the case this is the depth of the case and uh, in the terms of inch and that is the case of the depth of the case in terms of the millimeter so when the temperature is uh, increase and the time is increase so this type of the curve the carburizing process is done up to the 15 mm depth up to the 20 mm depth and here it is a 25 mm depth when the temperature is increased from the 15 50 fahrenheit and 15 16 50 degree fahrenheit and the 1800 degree fahrenheit so these are the curve which is affect the carburizing temperature on the case depth salt bath carburizing a molten salt bath sodium cyanide so sodium carbonate sodium chloride has the object immerse at the 900 degree centigrade for an hour giving the thin carbon case when the quench the gas carburizing second one is gas carburizing the object is the placed in a uh, sealed furnace with the carbon monoxide allowing for the fine control of the process nitriding the nitride are the form on the metal surface in the furnace with the ammonia gas uh, circulating with the 500 degree over the uh, long period of time that is the 100 hours it is used for the finish components Uh, diffusion hardening uh, first we take the nitriding process in nitriding process the nitrogen is diffused into the surface being treated and nitrogen react with the uh, steel to the form the very hard iron and alloy, alloy nitrogen component the process done uh, do, does not require the quenching the big advantage the case 
can include a white layer uh, which can be the brittle that is the advantage of the nitride Here it is the systematic diagram of the nitrating system. So here it is the ammonia cylinder and this is the flow meter and this is the controller. So this is the pipe where the gas is inserted in this chamber where the work is hanged over the hook and this is the closed chamber and this is the bubble produced when the seal is restored. So here it is the hydrogen gases come out and in the form of the bubbles. So this is the furnace where the, the work is heated at the 900 degree centigrade. So here it is the reaction. The ammonia is break up into the nitrogen uh, where, which is uh, absorbed by the work and the hydrogen is removed by the, this gas outlet pipe and it is in the form of bubbles. So this is the systematic gas nitriding system. Now the induction hardening. The induct eddy current heat the surface of the steel is very quickly and is quickly followed is jet of the water to the quench the component. The hard outer layer is the treated with the soft core of the slide way on the length are the intact the hardened. So this is the uh, this is the component is placed inside the coil. The high frequency current uh, in this coil is induct. The eddy current in the component is caused the rapid high temperature in the outer layer and this is the water jet uh, which is cooled the component and this is the carbon steel component. This is the carbon steel component and these are the induction coil and this is the component are the coil with the help of water jet. So this is the induction hardening process. Now the flame hardening process. In this process the gas flame raises the temperature of the outer surface over the upper critical temperature and the core will be heated by the conduction. The water jet quench the component as we see in the induction hardening. Again here it is the uh, component moves in the steady in the rate through the flame of the water jet. This is the again the component by which the surface is to be the surface hardened. And these are the these are the uh, torch nozzle heat the surface the component rapidly and this is the uh, surface heated surface and it is cooled by the water jet or quenched by the water and hardened the surface. So this is the flame hardening process. Now the age hardening process, the hardening over a period of time also known as the uh, precipitation hardening occurs in the uh, dur or aluminium which is in the aluminium alloy that contains the 4% of the copper it may it this uh, alloy very useful as it is uh, right yet reasonable uh, hard and the strong and it is used in the space industries the uh, Metal is the heated and soaked than the cooled and left. Now the what is the spherodizing? The spherodizing is the annealing process used for the high carbon steel that is the greater uh, great percentage more than 0.6 percentage of the carbon composition that will be the machine and the cooled form. Uh, subsequently and this is done by one of the following ways. Uh, ways. The heat, the part of the temperature is just below the ferrite uh, to the austenite line, the line which is represented in the phase diagram by the E1 and below the austenite and cementite line, the essentially below the 727 degree centigrade that is the 1340 degree Fahrenheit and hold the temperature for the prolonged time and followed by the fairly slow cooling. The cycle um, multiply the time between the temperature and the sliding over the, the slightly below the 
127 degree centigrade uh, that is uh, 1340 degree Fahrenheit say uh, the example uh, the 700 and the 750 degree centigrade and the cool down from these temperature or for the uh, tool and the alloy steel the heat to the 750 to 800 degree centigrade that is the uh, 1382 to uh, 1472 degree Fahrenheit and hold for the several hours and the followed by the slow cooling process. This is pyrometry, the measurement and the control the temperature in the furnace is called the pyrometry. The thermoelectrical pyrometer, here it is, the thermocouple use the principle that a small current follow if the two dissimilar metal are the joint and loop with different temperature in the junction, the galvanometer at the cool junction detect the change in the current at the hot junction in the furnace. So here it is the principle of the thermoelectric pyrometer. Here it is the uh, current flow in the loop of the measured by this apparatus and this is the loop and the current flow in this and this is uh, heated by this and the, and this is the hot uh, attachment and this is the furnace so by this we can measure the, the thermoelectric pyrometer Uh, this is the systematic diagram of the heat treatment process. So here it is the, on the y-axis, the temperature we take and the time on the x-axis. So here it is this process uh, about the uh, eutectoid temperature. So this is the eutectoid temperature line. So here it is the full energy process is occur here and here it is the hardening this is the hardening and here it is the tempering process which is the very last temperature is required 400 to 200 degree centigrade and this is the stress leaving curve which is also below the eutectoid temperature here it is just below the eutectoid temperature the sterilizing process is done here and above the austenite transfer transmit temperature uh, this is the austenite uh, os tempering process and this is the mar tempering process so these are the systematic way of the heat treatment process in the thermal cycle now the precipitation hardening the strength and the hardness of the some metal alloy may be improved by the uh, formation of the extreme small and uniformly dispersed particle uh, of the second phase within the original matrix. The alloy can be precipitated hardened, hardened or the age hardened by these the copper, barium, uh, copper, tin, magnesium and aluminium, aluminium and copper and the high strength aluminium alloy. These are the precipitation hardened or the age hardened components. This is the precipitation hardened alloy. This is the phase diagram of the precipitation hardened alloy. This is the criteria of these is maximum solubility of one component. So that point is M point is the maximum solubility of the component uh, in which the component is the in the um, solubility is 100%. The solubility limit that rapidly decrease with the decreasing the temperature. So when the solubility is decreased, when the temperature is decreased from the T0 to T1. So this is denoted by the MM. The process of uh, these precipitation hardening, the solution heat treatment first, the heat treatment where the all the solid atoms are the dissolved in the form of the single solid solution. So this
this is the solution of the treatment this is denoted by here it is the temperature is t1 and here it is the temperature is t2 and here it is the time in the x axis so firstly we heated the you know, solution so this is the completely heated the solution and hold for the uh, temperature of the t d is zero now it is the conch at the room temperature so here it is the conching process then after the precipitation of the heat treatment the precipitation is at and the again it is heated up to the t2 temperature and it is hold for the some time and then the precipitation hardening uh, alloy is obtained the, uh, in this the uh, super the super saturated alpha solid solution is usually heated so this is the alpha solid solution is heated and the intermediate temperature of the t2 so this is the intermediate temperature and uh, within the alpha and the beta region so this is the alpha and beta region diffusion rate is increased in the alpha and beta region the beta precipitate being being uh, to form the finally disappear particle in the process of aging so here it is this is the beta phase and this is the begin to form fine finally disappear particle this is called the aging process after aging at the t2 temperature so this is the after aging at the t2 temperature uh, the alloy is cooled at the room temperature the strength and the hardness of the alloy depends on the ppt of the temperature t2 and the aging time at this temperature here it is again the heated the solid solution uh, when up to the t0 uh, okay when the uh, solid solid uh, solubility is maximum and it is hold for the some time and then it is quenched at the room temperature and the precipitation is added and the, again it is heated up to the t2 and the, we obtain the precipitated heat treatment so this is the combination when alpha and beta now the solid the solution heat treatment the heat uh, treatable aluminium alloy gain strength from the subjecting the material to sequence of the processing step is called the solid solution heat treatment conching and aging uh, the primary goal is to create the sub micro size particle in the aluminium uh, matrix is called the precipitation that is the turn influence the material properties why the simple uh, is uh, concept the process is variable required depends on the alloy product or form desired the final property and the combination that is uh, make it the sufficient complex that heat treating that become the professional specialty the first step of the heat treatment process in the solution heat uh, solid solution heat treatment the objective of the, this process step is to place the element into the solid that is the even actually is called upon the precipitation hardening developing the solution heat treatment time and the temperature and typically involve the extensive trial and error partially due to the lack of the accurate process model now the aging micro structure the super saturated solid solution is unstable and it is left along the axis theta will precipitate out of the alpha phase and this is the process is called the aging what, what is the theta value uh, suppose this is the uh, liquid uh, interface line and this is the uh, solid so this is solid and this is the liquid interface line so here it is a draw in line uh, the, this angle is called the theta angle so here it is the type of aging by the two method natural aging and the artificial aging uh, 
natural aging process occur at the room temperature and the artificial aging if the solution is heated required heating to the speed up to the precipitation now the over aging after solution heat treatment the material is ductile since the no precipitation can occur therefore it may be the work easily after a time the solute material precipitates and the hardening development as the composition uh, react reach as the saturated normal state the material reach in the maximum uh, hardness the precipitation uh, however continue to grow the final precipitation disappear they uh, have grow larger and as the result the tensile strength of the material decrease so that is the over ag process uh, here it is the uh, combined diagram of the aging and the over aging the, the hardness and the tensile strength and this is the and this is the solid solution treatment so this shows the hardness and the blue line shows the tensile strength the uh, during the aging and over aging so here it is the aging process this is the aging process and the tensile stress is maximum at this level and the hardness is also maximum at this level when the precipitation is uh, over age then the over age process is occur then the hardness and the tensile strength will be low uh, aluminum rivets the example of the uh, uh, aging the alloy that uh, experience significant precipitation hardening at the room temperature after this short period must be quenched to the store under the uh, refrigerant condition the servol aluminum alloy that is the used for the rivet exhibit behavior they are driven while the stiff soft and the allowed to age harden at the normal room temperature so here it is the riveting process this is these are the several stages in the formation of the equilibrium of precipitation in terms of the theta so here it is the uh, the precipitation and the, this is this is the uh, solvent of the aluminum and uh, these are the in blue color the solute of the copper atom and here it is the in second the transition of the uh, precipitation and here it is the phase particle and it is uh, uh, like that structure and when it is in uh, systematic rearrangement the equilibrium of the phase within the alpha matrix phase then it is the systematic uh, composition of the precipitation the precipitation hardening of the uh, aluminum and copper of the systematic diagram here here it is on the temperature of the aluminum on the uh, right hand side the weight percentage of the uh, sorry the copper and here it is the weight percentage of the copper and here it is the composition range available to the precipitation hardening that is the uh, up to the 5 percent and here it is the alpha shows the aluminium phase and the theta shows the copper phase and here it is the alpha plus liquid and that is the uh, liquid uh, theta plus liquid and this is the zone of uh, aluminium and copper um, uh, the, and the pt phase the solution heat treated that the uh, alpha solution and the pt b uh, uh, when the room temperature retain the alpha solid solution and pt c uh, reheated to nucleate small theta particle within the alpha phase so here it is the pt a and this is the pt b and this is the precipitation uh, c and theta time so at the room temperature the stable state of the aluminum uh, copper alloy is an aluminum rich solid solution and uh, the, this show the intermediate phase with the tetra uh, crystal structure having the 
नॉर्मल कंपोजिशन ऑफ द सी यू एल टू दिस इज एलुमोनियम इन द लाइट वेट बट द इंजीनियरिंग वॉन्स टू इंप्रूव द स्ट्रेंथ द हाई परफॉर्मेंस एप्लीकेशन एंड द ऑटोमोबाइल इन द एरो स्पेस टू इंप्रूव द इंप्रूव द स्ट्रेंथ एंड टू यूज द प्रेसिपिटेशन हार्डिंग so here it is the composition of alpha and theta so here it is the after coaching the uh, saturated is alpha and this is the uh, fine precipitation of the theta here and this is the phase diagram of the aluminum and copper here it is the 100% of the copper and that is the 0% uh, 100% of the aluminum and 0% of the uh, copper and that that line shows the zero percentage of the aluminum and hundred percent of the copper to so increase the percentage of the copper in the x axis and the temperature from t2 to t1 so here it is the phase diagram of the 